so for this example, we want to use the change of base formula and a calculator to evaluate this expression. And we want to round our answer to three decimal places. So this one isn't really easy to evaluate as is. Um, so we need to use the change of base formula. And since we're using a calculator, the two different bases that our calculator typically can calculate are base 10, which is common log, and base E, which is the natural log. So I'm going to use the common log and change this into log base 10. Now when you're writing log base 10, you actually don't usually write the base because by just writing log without a base and then its argument, it's implied that it's base 10. So using the change of base formula, it says that we're going to get a quotient of two logs. Both of all those logs are going to have the same base. In this case, it's gonna be 10. The argument of your original log becomes the argument of the numerator, and the base of your original log becomes the argument in the denominator. So this is the change of base formula. We use this to change the base to 10, right? Using the common log. And then you just take this and you plug it into your calculator. And when you plug it in your calculator, you end up with something uh, 1.921. And we're rounding to the thousandths to three decimal places. So this would be our result. Um, some of the more advanced calculators today, you can actually plug in a different base and you don't have to use the change of base formula but the change of base formula allows you to evaluate a log on any calculator that can calculate logs. So any pretty much any scientific calculator. In this example, we want to evaluate log base three of seven times log base seven of nine. Um, in order to do this multiplication of these two logs, we actually need our logs to have the same base, which clearly they don't right now. So we're going to use the change of base formula to help us with that. Um, so we really have options. We can change the base to any base that we want. And so really that gives us a lot of freedom, but it also makes it sometimes difficult to figure out what base we should use. In this case, I'm going to use log base three. And the reason why I do that is I can see that here, if I'd use log base three of seven, it's already in base three. This one is going to be the one that changes. But when I use log base three of seven, this seven in the uh, denominator here tells me that we're going to get some canceling to happen. So let's go ahead and do this. So we have, uh, using change of base, we have log base three divided by, again, log base three. So the argument of your original log is the argument of your numerator, so log base three of seven, and then the base of your original log becomes the argument of your denominator, so it's like this, and then times, and we're gonna do the same thing here, using log base three. Log base three, and log base three. So the numerator, the argument of our numerator is the argument of our original log, so now we're dealing with this log here, so it's nine, and then the argument of the denominator is the argument or is the base of this original log. So log base three of seven. And what's nice, the reason why I chose log base three is because I see that that now allows me to get these to cancel. So those two cancel. Um, and then I can use the identity property, which says if you have a log with the same base as the argument, then that whole thing simplifies to just be the power of uh, your argument. And the power of my argument here is one. So this becomes one. So we get one over one. And this actually, we can use the same property because instead we're gonna express nine as three squared. So instead of using nine, we're gonna use three squared. So this is log base three of three squared. So this whole expression ends up being two. So it's one over one times two over one. And that whole thing simplifies to be two. So this expression evaluates to be two.